Hey guys, George here. I've just closed the chapter in my life and finalized that. So going forward, I will invest more time in developing media and teachings for the people that I, whose lives I touch and who God has sent me to and have accepted and are accepting the things that I share or are influenced by. And so if you're in that category, you're welcome to continue to listen and support Threefold. Threefold is a long-term project. And the goal of Threefold Christian Alliance is to find um, and work with like-minded men and women around the world who are fed up and with traditional... Um, pseudo-Christian versions of our faith and those who understand and know that the so-called official denominations and other such so-called authorities don't really represent God most likely and we have been living in a well poorly poorly orchestrated and poorly executed simulation if you will of the faith that the messiah came to give to the world i say poorly orchestrated simulations because when you study the history of christianity it becomes pretty clear that for the first 300 years there were no temples there were no priests archbishops and such the structure of the whole thing, the so-called body of Christ or Messiah, was very simple. It was based mostly in homes. And people um, were very focused on um, whatever uh, scripture, the Torah and the writings of the apostles. That's all they had. And they, um, they worshipped the Messiah. And that was their faith. It was very simple. It was very much home-based. The elders were just the mature believers um, in the congregation. Congregations were usually home-based. Um, sometimes they were together with the synagogue. Sometimes there were alternatives to that. But essentially, after the 4th century, when the Emperor Constantine, with the imperial edict, created institutional Christianity, imperial constitutional, imperial institutional Christianity, um, it became what um, we have been, we've come to believe that Christianity is. The institutions, be it Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, or Protestant, changing, uh, so to say, shape shifting, um, one escaping from another, one declaring the other for to be uh, um, illegitimate. So Catholics are condemning Protestants, Protestants are condemning Catholics. Catholics are condemning uh, Eastern Orthodox and vice versa. All of these are at odds with each other. All of these do not acknowledge each other's authority. So it's perfectly natural for the likes of me to say, I don't acknowledge neither one of you as an authority. I acknowledge as an authority Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, who came to give us the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and who fulfilled the promises that were given to us and made it possible for us not to only anticipate the shadow of things that, are, that were being prophesied, but to actually walk into the reality of that faith. Um, so having said that, um, I want to comment today on something that, that came to my attention here on X. If you're not on X, I encourage you to join X, um, not only to support uh, Elon Musk, but because it's actually really the place where news breaks. Like if you want to know what's going on, it's all happening on X, right? And we do have a closed invitation only account on X. Uh, you can only join if you're approved. So if you're planning on joining, drop me a line. Let me know. I'm so-and-so. We don't allow anonymous accounts. We don't allow people who just to come and um, create problems or troll or, um, you know, this is, this is actually a place for meaningful discourse. You don't have to be like me. You don't have to believe everything I believe. But you can't come and be a troll and just to create problems. So because of that, we don't allow anonymous um, 
uh, and it's not open for anybody it's a private account so go ahead and uh, check out the link if you want to join uh, our threefold community uh, but today I want to share I want to share with you um, the tweet or the, the post on X that caught my attention this is a statement by Francis the Pope of the Catholic Church who made the following statement it is a very grave sin to proselytize our Orthodox brothers and sister in Christ so I want to talk about proselytization what does it mean to proselytize to proselytize that use of the word goes back way back in time it actually goes back to the Greek translation of the New Testament uh, where Jesus rebukes the Pharisees, the Pershim, and he he tells them, you 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 know you you go all over the world to convert one Gentile to become a Jew to follow the uh, tradition of of the Jews, the faith of the Jews, um, and you know really that word was used in conjunction with the with the zeal that the Pharisees had. And I have a very actually positive view on the Pharisees. You have to understand that all the judgments and condemnations and criticisms that came from Jesus uh, against the against the so-called Pharisees, they were actually in a positive um, framework. They were criticism. They were not much different from the prophets, for example, in the in the Old Testament, pro, uh, prophesying and rebuking Israel. Um, so if you read well, you can take one sentence from a prophet who is very, very indignant against the sins of Israel. You can take one sentence or one, one uh, paragraph and you can turn it, you can create a doctrine out of it and say, well, look at what the prophet Jeremiah says about Israel. Look at what Isaiah says about Israel. And all the prophets have very, very heavy things to say about Israel. In fact, much more heavy than even anything that Jesus has said about the Pharisees. So you have to really understand where Jesus is coming from. He's following in the footsteps of a age-long tradition for a prophet to come and rebuke its own, his own, God's own, so they can correct their ways and they can um, convert to righteousness. Um, so when I say Pharisees, I do not mean Pharisees in a, in a negative way. In the traditional Christian sense, in traditional Christian sense, literally the word has become a synonymous for hypocrisy, which is a joke. It's a stupid, illiterate a way to use that word, but that's how people use it. So I just wanted to point that out. So proselytization simply it goes back to, uh, and I don't have that reference here in front of me. I should have had it, but it goes back to Jesus saying, you know, you're 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 going. You're going all over the world to proselytize, to convert uh, a, a goy, a Gentile, a non-Jew, to convert him to away from idols uh, to, uh, to the faith of Moses. Nothing wrong with that. It's much better for a Gentile to convert away from idols and to follow the faith of Moses than not. So there's nothing wrong with that. Jesus didn't even rebuke that. He only made it to contrast that statement was in contrast to hey you're doing this but you should be doing that so in other words you have to look at the context of the argument that was made let's go back to the pope here so this in this instant the pope is condemning it's a grave sin uh, that's a that's a very strong term to use a grave sin really hmm to proselytize our Orthodox brothers and sisters in Christ. So what he's saying is, if someone is born into an Eastern Orthodox tradition, let them be. Don't try to present to them the Catholic way of thing, doing things, the Catholic faith, interpretation. Don't try to convert them. Don't try to tell them that they're lost and going to hell and the only right way is the Catholic way, for example, right? Um, the proselytization of people, for example, in countries like Greece, is forbidden by law. So there are countries, just like in Muslim countries, um, 
if you proselytize, uh, if you if you go to a Muslim country, majority Muslim country, and you try to convert a Muslim, I mean, you you could you could you're eligible for a death penalty according to Islamic law, perfect total lawlessness. But anyway, and um, so it's a very uh, it's a very powerful term, and he's issuing. A grave warning about a grave sin. What's a grave? Deadly. Grave sin means deadly sin. In other words, if you do this, you might not be forgiven. You might lose your salvation. You might not be saved. That's a very heavy verdict. So, because I respect Catholics... And I respect their faith, their beliefs, their moral standards. There are so many Catholics who are amazing people and they love God. And to the best of their ability, they follow the law of God, the Bible, the teachings of Jesus. Even though a lot of these beliefs are heavily influenced by the Catholic Church. But let's look at the statement. What he's saying is a very uh, illogical and inconsistent approach to um, try to bring ecumenical peace between Catholics and Orthodox. So he's saying, saying something political. He's making a political statement, which in other words says, me, representing the, me the Pope, representing the Catholic institution, I am not endorsing and condoning Catholics were going out there trying to convert Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox Christians. I don't know how he feels about Protestants, for example, um, but probably feels the same way. And I haven't had too much time to research this. I'm just trying to stay at a high level here and try to point out to some really, really absurd inconsistencies in this man's public behavior, statements, and activities right i'm trying to point out that he is not an authority representing god or jesus christ he is a simply a man a mere man he is deceived on many many points and i really feel bad for all catholics who are sincerely trying to follow god but here they are with a quote-unquote commander-in-chief with the pope who's supposed to represent the unity of the Catholic Church and the Catholic faith, saying absurd things like that. So let's unpack this. If you believe, which the Catholic Church believes that and teaches that, that you can only be saved and go to heaven after you die, well, there's the purgatory, but that's another story, right? But let's just dumb it down. If, you are, if you're a true Catholic and follow Catholic teaching and doctrine, they believe strongly that you have to be baptized into the Catholic faith and church because faith and church is the same thing, right? They're all mingled together and they're, they're inseparable, right? You can't have faith without being part of the church, which what does that even mean? That's a whole different story, right? Um, so you go into this and if you're a true Catholic, you actually, if you unpack the teaching of the Catholic church, you actually begin to realize that the very core of being a Catholic literally means you cannot be a Christian unless you are a Catholic. You cannot be saved unless you're a Catholic. That's what they believe. That's what the Catholic teach, Church teaches. The Eastern Orthodox Church teaches the same. They also have the same approach. To my knowledge, I don't believe that the majority of Protestant denominations have a position where to say you must be a Lutheran to be saved or you must be a Pentecostal to be saved, or you must be charismatic. They all talk about repent of your sin, believe in Jesus, and you will be saved. So I don't believe that's a problem that the Protestants have, even though subtly many of them actually do believe, if you're really not part of my denomination, I don't know about you. I don't know about you being saved. I'm not so sure, but you know, if you go into this other denomination, maybe who knows what they're teaching you. I don't know what your status is. Nonsense like this is going on all the time. So as a result, we have a lot of confusion, a lot of ignorance, a lot of 
just frankly childish behavior, a lot of immaturity, lack of seriousness. This is not a serious argument. How can your core doctrines teach that only your church is right, but then you forbid your own loyal followers to tell others? And if I believe that my church, not my faith, my church, that institution that stems from Rome and the Pope and the whole hierarchy and the liturgy and everything that goes with it. So you got to be inside of that thing. You got to be par you got to be doing the rituals. You got to be doing all of that. So it's it's all you become enmeshed. You become in you know connected into the whole system right through series of things right. And you believe that that is what makes someone to be saved and go to heaven to to, to if they follow the Catholic way. How can you believe that? and disallow your followers of converting others. If he was a true Catholic and a, and a guardian of the Catholic faith, he should be saying exactly the opposite. He should be saying, we're the only ones that are right, and that's what they, their books really say that, right? So he's so disingenuous because he's portraying himself as this tolerant, he's portraying Catholicism as this tolerant faith, you know, be and let be, we'll let you be, We'll, we'll let you do whatever you want, right? And um, don't leave people alone. Leave people alone. And that is a big problem because I'd rather the Pope be honest and true and stick to his guns and be honest and true to Catholic doctrine. I'd rather have the Pope um, say what he believes and, stay, and take a stand and... You know, draw, draw a line in the sand and say, you know what? You want to know God? You want to follow God? Here's what you got to do. You got to become part of the Catholic Church. You got to follow me and us and the Catholic way. I'd rather have that because the next thing I'm going to do is I'll say, oh, really? Okay. Well, make a case for it, sir. Okay. Make a case for it. May the best man win. Okay, I'm going to take the Eastern Orthodox argument, the Catholic argument, lay the doctrines down, bring the Bible, bring your other books or whatever you want, make a case, convince me that if I follow the Catholic way of doing things with the baptisms and the Eucharist and everything all involved, make a case and prove to me that this is true and then I'll make my choice. Okay? Eastern Orthodox folks do the same. Protestants do the same. Whoever you are, make a case. If you're claiming that your church or denomination or tradition, if you're making a claim that that's the only thing that gets people saved, it's on you to make a case for it. It's on you to prove your position right and correct and true and worthy of following not on me to find out. And Catholics, by and large, cannot make that claim. They fail on so many different counts. The reason I'm not a Catholic is not because I have something against Catholics or something against even the Catholic faith or something against the Catholic people or whatever else. Not even the history because there's problems in everybody's history, right? But the problem is they have so many layers of problems from priests not not being allowed to get married, to worshiping, to the worship of Mary, to to purgatory, to to like, there's so many other problems, the worship of saints and so forth and so on. So when you take the totality of these claims and you distill it down to, hey, this is what it means to be Catholic. And I measure that against the biblical standard, the teaching of Yeshua and his apostles, the, the Catholic teaching doctrine, tradition, way of doing things falls short. It doesn't measure up. Not if the Bible, not if the Torah and the teachings of Yeshua are the gold standard. That's why I'm not a Catholic. They have, they have failed in convincing me. Okay? The same is exactly true for the Eastern Orthodox. They believe exactly the same. They believe that if you're not an Eastern Orthodox believer, if you're outside of the Eastern Orthodox Church, not to have faith again. It's one thing to have faith. You can have faith, but no, 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 that's not enough. To the Eastern Orthodox mind, to have faith means to be into the rituals 
and uh, and and follow everything right and um that also falls short of the biblical standard okay the problem i have with protestants is not that they're claiming necessarily i have to be part of their church to be saved the problem i have with protestants is that the actual message or teaching they bring is falls short of the gold standard which is the teaching of yeshua the, the messiah and the hebraic understanding of what it means to be a believer in yehovah in god and so the protestant doctrine and tradition also falls short of the truth and the teaching of yeshua and his way his apostles and their way so we have multiple problems here but how can this man tell his followers not to proselytize? I'd rather have him say, go for it, convince people, uh, present the Catholic faith. May, may the better argument win, right? Bring your arguments, know your faith, study it, right? Uh, have an open mind, but study it, know your stuff, right? You got to know your stuff. You got to know what you believe. You can't be ignorant, right? Why do I believe what I believe? I'm I'm saying this to some of you who are... You know, may you may not be Catholic, you may not be Eastern Orthodox. I uh, love Jesus, and you, you may be a good person, but do you really are you really sure you 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 know why you believe what you believe? You know, do you know what the core issues and the core convictions and teachings are, and what's the peripheral? Can you distinguish between core and per periphery, right? Or are you one of those people in whose head everything is just a mix, just a mix of chaos? You know, this, 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 you had a personal experience, but you can't really intelligently explain. You know, I'm a believer because this is what Yeshua is teaching. This is the most important. Here's the core teaching. Here's what defines someone to be true, a true believer. Here's how I'm trying to follow it. And so here's my case for what I'm making a case for wh wh who I am and what I believe and so forth and so on. So this is all very troubling. And here's what's even more troubling. This Pope, who is, in my opinion, um, seriously has compromised the Catholic institution. He has been friendly to jihadists, literally to terrorists. Look what else are we finding on him on X. Oh my goodness. Look at the grave sin. Pope Francis says it's a grave sin. Here he is again. Here he is again using this very intimidating and heavy-duty term, grave sin. So a sin that might just condemn you to eternal, what, damnation? Um, people who reject migrants. Really? Migrants. So if you're rejecting someone who's crossed the border illegally and goes and rapes women and kills children and, and innocent men and women, that's a grave sin. How look at look at the look at the institution, the power of this institution. Look at this incredibly confused, literally uh, led by the spirits of deception speaking through him and working actively against the strength of the Western civilization. I wish the Pope was a true Catholic. I wish he came and said, George, you're going to hell because here is my doctrine. No problem. I can handle that. I'll say, you know what, sir, with all due respect, you can keep your doctrine. I respect your convictions. I don't believe I'm going to hell because here is my case. Here is my conviction. Okay. I'm holding on to such and such understanding or tradition of, of the faith because X, Y, Z. So you know what? God bless you. Go your way. I go my way. We have tolerance. We have peace. I'll stand with you. Call me when there is a problem with, let's say, uh, we want to we wanna stand for abortion together. We want to stand against abortion in the public square. You and I can be allies. Um, you and I can be allies on, on preserving Western civilization from all the different attacks inside and out. 
But when it comes to our theological and spiritual differences, I respect yours. You can have your conviction. I have my conviction. You'll never be able to convert me. You'll never be able to proselytize me. If I can, I will present my beliefs to a Catholic. I'm not going to force them. I'm not going to manipulate them. I'm just going to tell them, make a case for what you believe. And I will make a case for what I believe and made the best argument win. But they don't think like that. The Catholic Church has a claim. People that are born in the Catholic Church, their claim is, Stay in the Catholic. You can't leave. You can't exit. There is no such thing as, oh, you want to exit? That's fine. You can go and um, not be associated with us anymore. See you in heaven. They, there's no such, there is no such possibility. Because the hardcore Catholic doctrine says that if you exit the Catholic Church, again, you're not rejecting Christ. You're exiting the Catholic Church. So <clears throat> people may end up in these absurd situations where they're in the Catholic Church, and their primary concern, the most of their energy is all about church, the church, the church, the church, the church, not the faith, not the relationship with God, not what is the condition of the heart, what's the condition of my mind, what, what am I doing with my life, but rather the church, the church, the church. And so as a result, you have church zealots, not necessarily followers of the Messiah. So, um, so here's a problem. This is a really problematic statement. It's a grave sin to reject migrants. No, it's not. It's called border protection. Nobody who is not nobody who is disallowed to go into a country should should, be, should attempt to go in. Border guards are allowed to shoot people down. Okay, and if someone is a true migrant, a true um, seeking a, a, an asylum for a true legitimate reason, they can. They that's a whole different story. Here we're talking about the last uh, six, seven, eight years or so, and the wave of so-called migrants who have flooded Europe, and this has resulted in the loss of life of hundreds and probably thousands of innocent Europeans, Americans, Westerners, because these so-called migrants come in, and all they know is rape, steal, live off the taxpayers' money, uh, Come, try to convert us to Islam, try to force us, try to cut our heads off, blow, blow us up in buses. And I'm sorry, but those so-called migrants need, deserve to be kicked out, deported out of, these, out of our beautiful countries, or they need to be shot. They need to be eliminated, those that are violent and murder people. So no, it is not a grave sin for us to reject illegal immigration. It is not a grave sin at all. It's actually a God-given sense of preservation, self-preservation and protection for us, our loved ones, and our countries. Oh my God, here's more, here's more. Here's another statement, uh, the grave sin to reject. Um, oh, here's another grave sin. This guy really likes this expression, right? Pope Francis just said, this is from 2023, the Catholic Church's great sin is being too masculine. Further, he said he wants to demasculize the church because there are too many male theologians and not enough female theologians. Are you kidding me? You're disallowing priests to marry because of your interpretation of the Bible? You've come up with this doctrine, you've maintained it for how many hundreds of, of years, and now you're complaining that there's too many? I mean, <laughs> right? What a shocker. So you want... So you want male priests, right? But you're kind of wondering and amazing why there's so few female theologians. I mean, what a joke. What a what an inconsistency. Does this guy even understand how ridiculous and absurd all this is? And so I really feel for Catholics because I know that there's so many Catholics who just love God. They want to be good Catholics, but they're horrified with this Pope. And I'm with you and I feel you. And those that are liberal and leftist, they like him because he embodies neo-Marxism. He embodies uh, liberal values. Uh, in other words, new liberal values such as homosexuality. He's, in, he's been hugging Muslims. He's been hugging trans, um, the trans culture. Uh, he's, he is constantly, um, constantly uh, on our case about being too traditional. And so I wanted to bring this up because... Oh, look at this. <clears throat> Here's a migrant, okay? 
me show you a picture of a migrant. Someone posted this and quoted, it is a grave sin for people to reject migrants in their countries. What do you think about Pope Francis? And they posted a video of a migrant. I'm guessing this is somewhere in Europe. This guy, this, the, the background looks like a European type of a city. And this guy looks like an African migrant. Who knows, screaming who knows what. He doesn't look very friendly, does he? Right? And it's a grave sin for me or for Catholics to reject this person. <laughs> no, it's not. The Pope is wrong. The Pope is wrong. Your gut instinct is right. God gave you that gut, gut instinct. And no, it's not a deadly sin to believe what you believe, to take a stand for what you believe. Go ahead, believe it. Make a case for it, right? Be a, be a true Catholic. Be a strong Catholic. Present your case. I, I may think you're wrong. I may never accept it, but go ahead. Defend what you believe. Present it. Be educated about what you believe, right? Um, and secondarily, no, it's not wrong to, to reject a wave of crime unhinged immigration, corrupt politicians allowing those people in, and this whole terrible, terrible experiment with free countries and free people ingesting so many just literally savages who've come in, they have absolutely no awareness what type of society they're in, and people say, well, some of them will become Christians. Yes, some of them will, but the majority will not. The majority will become a time bomb ticking and waiting to blow up in our faces. And that has been happening now for a long time. Hopefully, by God's grace, Donald Trump is going to reverse all that and a great purge will begin. First in the United States with deporting people back to their countries, cleaning our act and restoring law and order. God bless you. I look forward to sharing more videos with you. If you have any questions, you can post them um, underneath the video, whether it's Telegram, X, or YouTube.